How to use selections in Affinity Photo. The first one, rectangular marquee tool. Select that in the tools panel and click and drag. So what does the selection do? You've got this marching ends. Well, you can go over here to the paintbrush tool or a number of other tools and apply. And you can see the range is limited just to that selection. And it's super useful for many other things such as copying and pasting and other things as well. What you can also do, you can go for elliptical marquee tool. Along the top, you've got these modes. You've got off the options as well, such as feather. You've also got from center, etc. Now the first item here, create a new selection. So if I just create now, the old selection is gone and it's replaced with this new one, which is the elliptical or circular selection. You can also go here and column marquee tool. We'll do exactly the same depending on the mode here. And if you just increase the width there, you can see what you get is a column of 26 pixels. You've also got freehand selection tool. And you can apply and create a freehand selection, which is just a drawing selection and release. And now, exactly the same as before, if you go to the brush tool, select that, and you can apply, and it's just limited to that range. At any time, if you want to get rid of it, select and deselect. I'm going to go with the rectangular marquee tool, create a rectangular marquee, and I can add to it, and I can also subtract from it, as well as intersect it. So I've just created this. I can now go here to the modes. Along the mode, you've got the first one, which creates a new selection each and every time. But you can also go to add. So just click there. And now you see a little plus there. So instead of just creating a new one, you've got a plus. And now anything you add will just be added to that selection. You can add another one, another one. Now you can also use the keyboard as well. You can use the control on the Mac. So control and you'll get the plus as well or option and you'll get minus. But you can do it here as well along the mode. So if I want to subtract, just go here, select that one, and that will now subtract from that selection. And you can apply it multiple times like that to create all kinds of complex as well as basic selections. Also, say you decide, I don't want the selection to be there. I want it to be somewhere else. Well, you can go over here again, select any of the selection tools, such as the rectangle marquee tool or any of the others. Go to the first one, click that. And now instead of creating a new one, if you hover over the selection, you see the crosshairs and you can move. So you just reposition it. So you might decide, you know, want it there instead. Go to the brush tool and apply the brush stroke. You can also then go again here and again crosshairs and you can move it over here and maybe change the color. And again, brush tool and apply and create that with that selection. You can also add a feather to it, which makes a blurry selection. So if I just add this, a rectangular marquee again, and I'm gonna use that generally, but create that. Once you've got that, you can't apply the feather via here. You can go to select and all the select ones are here. You can run through, you've got grow, feather, smooth, etc. I'm just gonna go with feather here. So feather, feather selection. So I can just say, let's put it to 100. And as I do that, you'll see it goes slightly rounded. Click apply. Now, if I go to the brush tool, let's just go to the brush tool and apply. You can see instead of your sharp edge for your selection, you've got this blurring effect. And again, you can go over here, Select this, and again, make sense it's the new one. And you can go here with the crosshairs, move it there. Again, apply the brush stroke, and you can see you can create this design. There are also other selection tools, but they're more useful when you've actually got images. You can select a particular object or particular area. So you've got here a selection brush tool. So you can apply it, and you can see create all kinds of different selections. But in this case, it's obviously not much use. Affinity Photo has also got some other selection tools and I will cover those in other videos. But you've got this one, Selection Brush Tool, as well as the Flood Select Tool. How to save a selection. 
Say you've created a selection, I'm just going to create a rectangular marquee tool selection. Maybe go over here and subtract from it. So I've got that selection. I want to save it. I don't want to recreate it each and every time. How do I go about that? Well, you can go to select and you've got an option here, save selection as spare channel. You can also save it to a file. But it's particularly convenient as a spare channel. Click that. Straight away, you've got your selection added here to the channels panel and you can go back to it any time. So if I go over here, select and deselect, so it's gone, the selection is gone. To restore the selection, you can go over here to the channels, go to the spare channel, right click and load to pixel selection. And straight away, you've got your selection back. You can also modify the selection using a variety of different tools in the select menu. So select and down here to grow and shrink. So click that. You've got your radius. At the moment it's set to zero. So if I go to six or 37, you see it straight away that the selection gets bigger and bigger. Obviously you've lost the actual selection that was there before. Also, you've got option here for circular. So just reduce that down and you can see then you've got a more rounded selection. And you can go the other direction. So push that down and you can shrink it and you obviously lose that selection in the center and then slowly all the other selection. You can also outline the selection. So go to select and outline. And with that, go up here and you've got radius. And you can just increase that. And as you do that, you'll notice then Instead of the selection you had before, you will now have the outline. So if I go for 26, you can align it to outside or center or inside. And again, you can go for circular, so you can get a more rounded design. And then click apply. The brush stroke is applied to the outline. You can also go to select and invert pixel selection. So that will invert the selection and so the whole document is selected other than the current selection. So invert pixel selection. Now if I apply the brush stroke, it's applied like that, but not within that selection. I can also edit the selection as a layer. So I can use brush strokes, etc., to modify the selection. I can go over here and I'm going to set it to white. Now I could use gray, I could also use black. So set it to white. Then go to select and down to edit selection as layer. With that, I can now apply the brush stroke and using white, I can go and create all kinds of different selections. that will probably be tricky to create using the standard selection tools. So I've got that. Then going select and edit selection as layer to come out. So edit selection layer. And now you can see the selection has been changed. And now I can apply my brush strokes designs, etc. within that selection. I can also go into select, edit selection as a layer. Got that selection and I can go to filters and I can go down here to distort, deform. You can apply any effects, just quick effect like that. And I can distort it, modify it, click apply. Go to select and edit selection as a layer. And you can see now you've got a selection that's been modified by a filter. Just open an image, it's got transparency. So what I can do, select and selection from layer. So when I do that, you can see the selection is based around what I've currently got in my layer. As I've only got these three women, that selection is applied to that. If I go to select and selection from layer intensity, the selection will be different. It's based on the grayscale image. And you can see it's now selected different parts of the image. And you can again use that in different ways with brush strokes, or maybe go to edit and copy, and then edit and paste to create additional layers. Slightly confusing, the select menu also includes this, select all layers. This has got nothing to do with the selections, such as the ones with associated with channels and the marching ants. But down here, you have got options for selecting reds, greens, and blues, as well as selecting midtones, shadows, and highlights. So if I select that, then you'll notice you've got a selection 
based just on the highlights, the brighter parts of the image. You've also got select alpha range, so select fully transparent. So that will select again everything here that you can see. This area is not selected. And also you've got select sampled color. So select that and you will see then you've got tolerance and you can increase it or decrease it, but also click on the document at any point. Say there the trousers and that area that's similar will also be selected. So you can select that gray, everything that's very close to it with this tolerance will be selected. So if I reduce that down, as you see, I reduce that down, less and less of the image will be selected. Now, the, obviously, when I clicked on the documents, so I click, say, here, it's going to be a different selection to, say, here or here. And you can see when I click here, then down the pink, all the flesh selected instead. And that's a run through of most of the basic features of selections in Finti Photo. I hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.